Hello everyone, so yeah, here we go. This is how to frame a simple picture. Um, I'm going to put this on my YouTube channel as well and uh, it might help it with the people. So it's just a simple framing exercise. You don't need all the equipment. Obviously, I do a lot of framing because I sell my work um, and it's a cheaper way of doing it. I also use professional framers, but in this instance, um, with this little watercolour cottage here, I've uh, bought the, the frame from the framers already uh, made and I'm going to actually frame my picture myself. So I'm just going to turn it over. So what I've done on the back here so you can see, this is what the frame has come from the framers like. So it's got a, it's got a hanging uh, hook here, which is okay if you're going to hang it at home. But um, if you can hang it in an exhibition or something like that, you're going to need to um, put some string on the back because every gallery or venue will have a different way of hanging. And normally string is the is the way to to attach the pictures on these hanging systems. So I'll just take this out here. Um, this is the backboard. So the frame has got my picture in it. This <laughs> it's got a picture on the back <laughs> of uh, of what I did in a in a in a demo in a class recently so it's just a start or something there so all i've done is uh, i've got my mount i'm not going to take my mount out because you've seen the mount in the front because i've already cleaned the glass inside and it's spec free and to get glass spec free is a mean <laughs> a mean thing so um, i've got an actual blower it's an electric blower that i blow over the glass and it gets rid of all the um all the dust and specks and stuff like that but if you haven't got a blower which i haven't had for a very long time you can just use uh, the best thing to do is use um you know mr sheen wipes or like polish wipes so it's it's it picks the dust up rather than just spreading it around the glass so yeah so i've cleaned the glass and i've attached my uh, picture to the mount of where i want it positioned on the mount so if i just turn it back again so you can see here it's all positioned in that mount there okay and it's just put on with some masking tape I haven't uh, taped all the way around because, you know, over time pictures move and, uh, you know, um, conditions are different. Sometimes it's warm, sometimes it's cool. So you don't want it all plastered on with masking tape. Just a few, make sure it's secure with masking tape will be sufficient there. And what I am going to do while I've, uh, while I've got this in this state is just sign the back here because, uh, I, you know, I probably will sell this piece at, at some point and just put it's an original watercolour there so if this ever gets reframed again in its life um, they know that it's authentic there so that's what I've done there so this is the backboard and that just fits on really easily like that and in uh, the frames that you buy or get from the framers they normally have these these bendy clips in so you just push them down just to secure everything in its, uh, in its right place there. These are really useful, like that. Over time, they will bend and uh, come off, but if you're just framing it, you know, a couple of times or just in this instance once, it, there should be enough to secure your work there. So I'm so just gonna turn it around so you can see, okay? So that's all nice and secure in there. It's not gonna move. I've got rid of the dust. Uh, just give it a wipe there so everything is is nice and clean and ready to carry on with now the next thing is right is uh I've, i use this which is framers tape you don't have to use that you can um just frame without it but um you know it does help it does help because you will get little bugs crawling in now and again um, I've seen it happen <laughs> and it just keeps the dust out again again you don't have to buy this you don't have to go and get it you can frame, frame your pictures without it and it's like a it's it's like a, it's brown sort of paper paper texture one side and sticky the other so I'm just gonna uh, put this on and it, it sort of tidies up it tidies up your picture on the back there uh, just one a very important tool I haven't got out yet. I thought I'd got everything. There you go. I haven't. Just uh, found it in my pencil case here. It's a scalpel. So if you're going to do anything like this, if you are going to put framing tape on the back of your pictures, uh, let's just move that down a bit so you can see what I'm doing. You will need a scalpel, and that's just to take off 
these edges here and just cut that there like that and just press down nicely because this frame is quite a shallow frame it's okay if you were doing a deep frame you might have to cut into this tape just to make sure you get it along the edge there nice and neatly so i'm going to go under that um fixture there just try and lift that up a bit so i can get my tape under it that's it mm, it's a bit fiddly bear with bear with so let's try and lift that up a little bit here framing you think it's going to take two minutes and it often takes a lot longer than you think <laughs> so don't give yourself like five minutes to frame something give you can make yourself a cup of tea have yourself a nice little cup of tea on the side there <laughs> because it does take longer than you think so i'm just gonna line that up there so that's I'll tell you what i don't think it's gonna work is it let's just try and get that in there like that what I'm going to do is put it on this side here, so I've got that nice edge there. It would be awkward, wouldn't it? The one that I'm showing you. That is a good thing for you to see. And then I'm just going to trim so it doesn't it should come up nicely. So it's got that there, and that can go back down. Okay, I'll just put that to one side. I might need that later on. Again, I'm just going to tidy up this corner here. Here, just along the bottom. It's not more straightforward. Cut the edge there. Press it down nice and firm. Keep it nice and flat. And then see it. get too many wrinkles in it i mean it's not going to be seen but it's nice to have a nice neat finish it just adds to the presentation of your work you know and it is important i think to present your work well you don't necessarily you know if it depends what level you are or how you want to if you if you're selling a lot you know i'll use a framer i also buy frames pre-made it depends on, on the size and the work that's going in there so there we go. So that's all nice and neat and tidy. So you see you've got your, your framing tape on. Now, obviously you don't have to use it. I have this little set here. I bought this from the pound shop. And um, it came with lots of, uh, these, these tacks are really good for hanging pictures that aren't too heavy. Uh, it came with all, uh, you know, raw plugs, all different things. And over the time, over the years, I've kept this tray, used all the, all the bits and bobs that are in there and replenished it with d-rings so this is a d-ring obviously because it's in the in the shape of a d there and you need two you need one each side of your picture of your frame and obviously you need a screw and when you buy this you tend to get the d-rings and the screws together pound shops are great amazon so they're not expensive they're it's um, a couple of pounds and you'll get a good supply and then you can carry on framing your work i also use um picture hanging cord which is a professional pitch hanging cord so um it doesn't slip because obviously i sell you know some of my work costs a lot of money and you don't want your picture slipping falling off the wall so i use this it's very strong doesn't slip but you can just use if you haven't got picture hanging cord you can use string or um some people use wire they put wire um through the d-ring there and hang the picture with wire so it's just your preference really so good a good quality string should keep your picture nice and safe and hung nicely so also now i'm going to mark out the um how where i want my d-rings to go on the back of this frame so what i've done is i've turned it around so that the top of my picture um is facing this way so when i turn it around i know that this side is the top of my picture so this is the top of my picture and what you want to do you don't want to make your 
you don't have to make a hole in the frame and you don't want to make this hole halfway because the, the it won't hang properly it also it, it might um you know it, it, it'll, it'll move and you don't want that you want it to be once it's on the wall nice safe and sound and secure so you tend to go measure just move my cup of tea, my cup of tea here just move that out of the way when you're measuring uh, where to put your hole for your d-rings to be attached you tend to go just above halfway so this frame measures 24 centimeters roughly so 12 is halfway so if we did if we start from the top of the frame there and measure 10 centimeters down like that that should be um that should be okay and perhaps go nine no nine and a half i'm going to go nine and a half i just run it up a bit a bit further than halfway so that when it hangs on the wall the bottom of the frame is is uh, straight to the wall so i've i've gone nine and a half centimeters down and i've got a dowling this is like a dowling tool so this makes holes in uh in wood it makes it's really useful tool to have if um <clears throat> If you're an artist it does it does lots of things but it, you know it's really good for framing so this is this is my dowling tool you can use a screwdriver you can just make a mark with your uh, screw there and just uh, you know just screw straight into the wood but here i'm just going to make a little hole so i'm <clears throat> going nine and a half centimeters down and also with the d-ring you don't want it right at the edge of your frame you want to come in with your hole so it's sort of um, in the middle so the d the d ring metal bit doesn't show on the on the front of your frame so i'm just going to make a hole about there that's my nine and a half just pressing down and there's a little hole you see there like that i didn't do the same this side so if i can move it up there i'm just going to measure nine and a half centimeters down again like that and just make my hole with my tool there like that. so that means now that when i start to attach my d-ring it fits nicely can't see it on the other side so i'm just getting my screwdriver so it's phillips screwdriver you know what that is it's the one that's got the little star shape so i've just fitted my screw into my d-ring like that i'm just putting it placing it over the hole screw it in a bit fiddly especially when there <laughs> you're filming yourself it's always, it's always a bit fiddly isn't it that's it like that so i'm just going to move that down and see screw that in keep going Another uh, tip for this as well is normally the screws are um, their standard size when you buy. A, oh, sorry, just bash the camera. When you buy a set, but it's always a nice thing to do is just check that screw because it has happened to me before that when you're going to screw that in, it doesn't come through. Let's just see if I can show you that on the camera there. It doesn't come through. Oops, to the front yeah it's uh there's loads of space there the width of that screw is is shorter than the width of the frame because it has it does happen when you screw in there you put your little um d-ring on and voila the screws come through to the front of the frame okay so there's me with a the little hole there that i've made with my tool just going to screw this one in there's it I am left-handed as well, so it might look a bit strange. Is it going in? Let's just try it again. Here we are. So, it's a really good way. These are really neat as well. They, they lay flat against your frame. You want nothing sticking out of the back, so... It's a really good way of hanging your pictures. So, just make sure that one's... That's nice cool. Yeah, so there we go. D-rings attached. 
obviously the D goes in the middle. If you don't want it on the outside, you, you want all this is hidden so that when you have your picture, you don't see any of this. So there you go, there's your D rings. So what I always do is, um, because it's this is going horizontal landscape direction, I, I turn it um, upright, portrait if you like, if you want to use that. And because um, we need a bit of tension here now for the string, so we're going to attach a string. And I always, um, let's do it this way so you can see it on the camera better, just to show you. So you need, how much string do you need? How long is a piece of string? <laughs> it's one of them, isn't it? So what you do is, if you uh, get your string that you're going to use, and just, you know, roughly gauge with your fingers, double it. So you, that's the length of my frame. That's the string length there. But I want to double it. Because uh, you need two widths to hang your frame because it, it just makes it a bit stronger. It's not just one single string going across. It'll be double like that, okay? So that's enough for me there. So if I just cut that, a pair of scissors like that. That's it. That's all. I, this is all I need. So yeah, let's turn it that way, which is what I was doing before. So now... You've got your string. It's you've you've cut it. You've got it in in half. You've you've uh, folded it in half like this. Okay, so you've got a double width there. And through one D ring, you put your string through, and that loop there where you folded it in half, you just pull through both threads, so you make a knot on your D ring like that. Turn it round. And then obviously this is the free side here. Now you've got your, your cut ends and you just push them through like that. And this is where you get your tension. So I've cut a little bit extra so that I know that when I start to knot this, I've got some tension here. So it gives me room to knot. Now, I was showed this. I used to do this, um, not as a living, but as part of my job. And I worked in a... In a photographic company actually so I, I've done this a couple of times but I can never remember the actual way of knotting so all I do is try and knot it as tight as you can so there's a double knot there I've gone through I go through them as well through the middle of them and around the back like this and just keep it I've done one double knot there and I'm just going to do another Double knot here, going around the back of the string, so it doesn't. So the knots are flat. Can you see they're flat along the string there? They're not um, sticking out. Now that is should be enough. That should be enough for what you need. What I'm going to do with that little extra bit of uh, framers tape that I took off earlier, I'm just going to cut a piece. You can do this with masking tape if you want to, uh, just to tidy the edges there like that. So I'm just going to tape around the edges like that so they keep together and nothing comes undone. Like that. So turn it round. Got your picture. There we are. Lovely. All ready to frame, all ready to hang now and put on the wall in your exhibition or whatever you do. Okay, I hope that's been helpful. So, right then, see you soon. Bye.